Okay, I think we shall start because it's a quickie and I actually don't have enough time uh, to, have, uh, to, to show everything I want to. But thanks everyone for coming. Yeah, I will do this fancy animation once again. Ah, oh, looks nice. Okay, so, hi DevOps, uh, my name is Mikhail and um, I'm, oh, it's not, oh, hi. What? Okay, now, now it's okay. So, uh, my name is Mikhail, Mikhail Matviev, and I'm people lead at um, uh, the Deutsche Telekom in T-Digital. T-Digital is our new branch in Thessaloniki, which is uh, pretty nice. We are here since last uh, summer, and maybe you have seen our booths, uh, over there, we have some nice things for you, so if you haven't been there, just come around and see what we have. Uh, but uh, the topic which I want to present to you is uh, about Markov web framework, which is pretty old, but it's not so much famous as React, for example. I would like to ask you, uh, please raise your hand if you have some experience with React. Okay. Thank you. And did uh, someone have any experience with Marco? Okay, great. I expected that I won't see any hands, so it's really nice to see you here. Okay, so um, actually as uh, I see on the slide, it's about full-fledged alternative to React, and I also have a, my own pet project, which I would like to show you, so I think this will be interesting. And uh, let's get down to nitty gritty. So first thing first, Marka is like HTML and JavaScript had a perfect baby that grew up to be awesome. So that's the true because I will show you why on the next slides. But the most important thing, it's uh, community driven, so it's completely open source. It has pretty big community, not such big community as React, of course, but it's pretty big and it's really helpful. Also, it's uh, performant and it's scalable and it's trusted. So it's being used by many websites like eBay, for example, they're using this uh, all the time. And uh, in Telecom, we also have some internal projects based on React. Uh, so it's uh, not so well known as React, but uh, someone already is using it. And uh, the basic features are, the most important thing which I want to mention is that uh, something what you can call HTML re reimagined. So this means that any HTML code is just a valid marker code. If you don't want to rewrite anything, you can simply use your HTML code and this will be valid. So it has also some nice features like progressive rendering and I will show you this on the next slides. And uh, it has a great performance also. So, uh, I would like to also to share this link with you. I don't think this is going to work on mobile phones because it requires a bigger screen. But if you cannot see anything on mobile phone, then you can type in the address and see it on your laptop. Using this website, you will be able to try everything online in the, in the real time, so you will see how it works uh, by yourself. And uh, the next thing is a uh, picture for your attention. So the bundles of Marka are, uh, have uh, much uh, smaller sites, which is important. I know now we have much faster internet, but we have to remember that some customers or users might have still 3G connection, so this is important. I also take this uh, into consideration. And uh, I will specify the differences. Uh, the first differences uh, are about rendering. So Marka uses virtual DOM, and it has a possibility to stream everything right on the server. So it has uh, full asynchronous support, uh, which means that you can simply do it like you do in modern JavaScript using async. And also it has built-in server side uh, uh, rendering support, which is important for the people who care about search, um, uh, um, search systems like Google or anything else. So you know uh, there are some problems with uh, uh, single page applications because of it. Uh, that's what a progressive rendering looks like. So as soon as your browser gets some information, marker renders this uh, and uh, you don't have to wait until everything is loaded completely. There are some differences in, in syntax, and f the first uh, important thing I would like to mention, there is no special language or something like this, so you can just use the combination of HTML and JavaScript. 
There was nothing like G6, and the, uh, there was no such be uh, such strict. Um, uh, there was no strict uh, strictness, yes. So you don't have to care about the text so much. You simply can use your uh, already created HTML page, and, and it will be shown. It has some nice directives, and I will show this on the next slide. So, on the left uh, picture, see how React syntax look like. It has uh, a good separation. So, uh, oh. Yes, uh, it, has a, it has a separation, but uh, you see there is um, uh, something what uh, normally should be avoid. So you are, you are embedding the HTML code. So this is J6, not HTML, but looks like HTML into, the, into this uh, uh, code lines. And for the marker, you just use uh, something what's, uh, what's really good separated. So down below, you see and it looks like a simple HTML code. It has some uh, differences, but yes, still uh, really nice in my opinion. And uh, there is another example. So this is uh, React syntax, and if you need to make some ifs and else's, you use it uh, in a JavaScript way, but for marker, you just use the corresponding special text. So that's much more easier to read, I guess. Also, one more thing about the compilation, there is a uh, really nice thing about the compilation that you actually have a full control. You can do uh, many things and you can transform the text the way you want. You can add, add your custom fun functionality. And uh, also React is really modular, which means that you only use what you need to use. Also, another great feature is validation. So if you uh, have some some uh, typos, or if you are missing some text, uh, you will get an error during the compile time. So you actually don't have to care if uh, you forget something. You will get a notice before you uh, build your application. Uh, also, if you write the code, it will be compiled for the server and for the browser. So you don't have to care about the differences. Mark will do this by yourself. Uh, for, um, will do this. Uh, for you, and you don't have to worry about it. So that's how the compiled code looks like. And uh, this nice thing about control, that's what I said already, you can use such nice feature. For example, at the top, you write this small code. You use this marked uh, library in order to convert uh, the, H uh, the markdown to HTML, and then you can just use a simple tag like this and nothing else. So that's simple. You can use the markdown uh, right uh, on your website. Also, another great uh, feature, in my opinion, is about uh, boilerplates and single files. So you, you can have everything in a single file, and you don't have to care about uh, lots of uh, directories and files if you don't need to. Of course, if you have a big project, you can do the separation. You can separate the JavaScript code, the marker code, and uh, the CSS, for example, or less. But anyway, if you don't want, if you have a simple component, you just can put everything into one file. So that's how a typical React component looks like. So you have to extend something, this React component, and you have to use the render function, or you can simply return it. But anyway, it uh, it's, looks like JavaScript. For Marco, it looks like this. You have uh, this uh, JavaScript part. You have CSS or less, uh, or SCSS part. And then you have the Marco code. So this is what a typical Marco component looks like. Also, another great thing is about event system. So event system is based on uh, real DOM events, but it is extended by Mark events, so this is really consistent. You don't have to care uh, about it too much, and it works like a charm. I will show you on the next slides the syntax. Of course, there are some things which you have to notice. There is no native mobile support, so there is nothing like React, uh, React Native. Unfortunately, it's, it can be done because Mark has such features, but it's not done yet. And you always have to have a bundler to build application, especially when this is about uh, server rendering. Uh, so this is important. 
Okay, let's see. So this is just an HTML page. It looks like this. <laughs> I think everybody understands what happening here. So, and at the same time, this is also a valid marker code. So you can simply copy, paste it, and use it as is. Of course, if you want to use some features of marker, you can rewrite it like this. So we can use the cycle, and uh, without any problems, you can put the special marker magic here. So, which is nice. Here is another example, a little bit more complicated. So, here is a, a button and a counter, and you see how mark events are working. You just define the on-click event, and the corresponding function will be called to do the magic. Here's also the state, which is synchronous, by the way, which makes it really easy to test. And also, there, is shorthand uh, there are shorthand attributes, so you can just uh, use it like this. You don't have to write uh, ID or class every time, so which is really nice and save you some time. Everything is JavaScript. All the attributes can use objects. Uh, they can use arrays. So uh, every attribute is uh, uh, just JavaScript and Markham. And you can simply set CSS classes like this, so which is also really nice. And uh, last but not least, async rendering is done like this. You can use this await at, uh, tag in order to specify the logic of your component when it's not synchronous. I have prepared this nice boilerplate for you on the GitHub, so you can simply use it to play around with Marco. Everything is configured. I have done this with Webpack. I have set uh, all necessary things for Visual Studio Code, so if you want to try it right away, you can simply do it and uh, see how it works in action. There is a small readme, so nothing difficult, I guess. And as I promised, I have my own pet project, which is called Heretic. I use it mainly for some uh, management tasks, which I have, like uh, some smaller databases and some other things which are usually being done using Excel, which is not so nice. I think not everybody in the IT community life loves Excel <laughs> because it's sometimes uh, too painful to do some trivial things there. So, it's much easier doing this with Heretic, and uh, it takes about several hours to create a new database and uh, the way how it can be controlled. So you can see by yourself how this is working. I have a demo website, and you can use uh, username admin and password password. So that's easy. And there is also a GitHub repository for it. So if you want to contribute, especially if you have uh, time, you can help me to translate everything to Greek. <laughs> yes, because I, I just started learning Greek not so long time ago, and I cannot do this properly. Yeah. And uh, if you want to ask me something, you can find me on the telecom stand, or uh, you can write me in the Telegram. Unfortunately, I don't use Instagram or something like this. So, But you, if you have Telegram, just... Uh, write me. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our telecom resources. Uh, we have lots of uh, interesting vacancies for you, and we are working remote, so we are based in Thessaloniki, but you don't have to relocate to Thessaloniki. If you are living somewhere on an island, you can simply subscribe and then just find something interesting for you if you want to. Um, yeah, go to Magenta site, please. It's nice. <laughs> and if Haristo, ya prasohi sas. Okay. <laughs>